So if you're like my dad who got his very first 3D printer ever, go talk to mom, she knows what's going on. Then you're probably a little bit lost and not sure where to begin. I wanted to create this video to give you kind of all the information that you need to know to get started on your 3D printing journey because a lot has changed in the last few years. So let's get started. Please feel free to use the chapters to skip around and don't forget about all the links down below in the description. There's a lot of useful information in there as well. So what are 3D printers? Well, you can think of them as a very precise hot glue gun. They use plastic filament. They heat it up, they extrude it out of a little nozzle, they lay it down on the bed, they stack this up in layers, and eventually you get a three-dimensional part like this. It is a very useful tool for just about any hobby, anything from woodworking, metalworking, all the way up to just basic hobbies, cosmetic designs, things like that. So let's start off by talking about 3D printer filament. So here is a nice stack of 3D printer filament. Filament is the consumable for a 3D printer. It generally comes in these one kilogram spools or 2.2 pounds. So it's generally sold by weight. And filament is generally speaking universal. Any filament you buy is gonna work with any printer. There are of course some caveats to that. The types of filaments might end up being specific to the type of printer you have. They might be high temperature, abrasive, things like that. We're not going to get into all those details in this video. Generally, you're going to probably be printing mostly out of PLA. PLA material is the easiest to print. It has kind of the best properties for printing. It's very rigid, but it does tend to be a little bit brittle. It's not good for UV and it's not good in high heat applications. As an alternative, there's PETG, which is better for higher heat applications, better in sun, things like that. But there are dozens upon dozens of different types of materials. For most things, you're probably gonna stick with PLA, but check out a site like Matter Hackers. I have a link down below. They kind of have nice filament profiles for all the different types of filaments that you would be looking at. As a last note, there are two different diameters of filament. You have 1.75 millimeters and 2.85 millimeters. Most printers on the market today are gonna to be 1.75 millimeters, but it's just something to kind of look out for. Make sure you're getting the right filament diameter for your printer. The nozzle diameter is something that is different. Most printers are gonna have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. That's something completely different. That is basically the size of the extrusion that comes out. You wanna pay attention to the actual filament diameter, and it's most likely gonna be 1.75 millimeters. Due to the increased popularity of 3D printing over the past few years, there are a ton of options for filament. However, not all filaments are created equal. It's generally good to stick to a few known good brands. For kind of more budget filament, I really like Hatchbox, Overture, and Sunlu. And for a more premium filament, I tend to like Prusament, Bamboo, and Colorfab. Also, not all filament types are going to print exactly the same. So you might have to make some minor tweaks here and there. For instance, like a silk PLA, like this um, really pretty shiny stuff, might be a little bit more stringy, so you might need to dial down the temperature. Just something to keep in mind. Also, different filament types are going to be susceptible to absorbing moisture, and any moisture absorption during the extrusion process is gonna create some issues. I have a whole video on drying your filament, but you might want to get a filament dryer if you're gonna be printing a lot of PETG, nylon, ABS, or TPU, as those tend to absorb moisture. Lastly, some filaments have some abrasive elements to them, um, looking at like the glow in the dark filaments, carbon fiber filaments, some of the stone and wood fill filaments. These little abrasive bits on the inside will end up opening up your nozzle and creating issues. The nozzle is generally brass and that can open up very easily over time, so you might want to invest in a hardened nozzle. Thankfully, most filament manufacturers are going to note if you need a hardened nozzle or not, but it's something to keep in mind. So how do you get the 3D models that you need to put into the 3D printer and get your final parts? Well, there's two different options. You can either design your own using a popular CAD program like SOLIDWORKS or Fusion 360. 
as long as you can save as an STL or 3MF format, you should be good to go. If you're not going to be designing your own parts, there's a lot of other options too. There's a lot of online repositories like Thingiverse, Printables, and Maker World where you can just download files that people have already done. And generally speaking, all of these files are going to be free. There are a few paid sites where you can pay for artist models of things, but most parts are going to be free to download on those sites I mentioned. Check out the links down below. There's a whole host of different things you can download, anything from holiday decorations to replacement parts for things you own, improvements, jigs for tools for woodworking, all sorts of different things. So be sure to check out those sites, browse around, and just start searching for things, and you'd be amazed what you will find. So let's talk about the slicer. The slicer is a piece of software that takes your 3D model, slices it into individual layers, and then creates the instructions that your 3D printer needs to actually print out that model. Most modern 3D printers are gonna come with a slicer. It could be a universal program that just has the preloaded print profiles in it, or it could be something specific like in the case of Bamboo Studio or Prusa Slicer. If you're at all familiar with machining, this is basically CAM software. When you first open this software, it might seem a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of options and a lot of settings, but for most models that you're just gonna be downloading, you're gonna be selecting one or two options and hitting print. So they are pretty easy once you kind of get used to them. From here, you can either download the file to an SD card and plug it in the printer, or for some of the newer printers, you can actually send that file over to the printer wirelessly. And you don't have to mess with anything. As we'll see later in the video, I will slice something and send over to the printer so you can get a good idea of what that whole process looks like. So let's talk about the 3D Benchy. If you're at all familiar with 3D printing, you've probably seen this model everywhere. It is kind of ubiquitous with hobby level 3D printing, and there's a lot of reasons why. It's an extremely clever model that was used to benchmark early 3D printers. It might look very simple, but this is a very difficult model, especially for the early generation of 3D printers. As you can see, there's a lot of fine detail. We've got the little um, steering wheel on the inside. We have this little hole at the bottom. There's actually text across the back, text on the bottom as well. And then the front hull can be kind of difficult because it is an overhang. This is used to determine if the printer has enough cooling performance. You've got a bridge up here, which is just bridging across nothing. The smokestack can be kind of tricky if you're not allowing enough time in between each layer. There is a whole website devoted to all of the little tricks in this model. And I bring this up because it's something that you're probably going to come across, and generally speaking, everyone's first print is probably going to be a Benchy. That is the thing that is pre-sliced on every machine, and it's kind of the test print. It's the first thing that you print. A lot of people print one of these in every single filament that they have, just so you can kind of get an idea of what that filament looks like. But that is why the Benchy exists. Modern printers can pretty much handle this no problem. This is what a modern Benchy looks like, and it's pretty much flawless. There's really no issues with it. Most modern printers can produce a Benchy of this quality. However, in recent years, uh, speed has become a much bigger factor for 3D printers, and so originally this model was about two hours to print. Now it's about one hour, and some of the faster printers can do this in about a half an hour or less, and some of the absolute fastest printers that exist can do one of these in about five minutes. So it's actually gaining some new popularity due to the fact that you can print this very, very quickly. If you're 3D printing, it's inevitable you're going to have some failed prints, and that's okay. Especially in the beginning, it's going to be a little bit frustrating, but it will get better as you learn a little bit more. The thing that I like to do is play a little game, and I call it the blame game. The first thing to do is blame yourself. It's probably something you did wrong. Did you select the right filament type? Do you have the right temperatures? Do you have the right profile selected? Do you even have the right printer selected? Things like that. Always investigate from yourself what it is something that you did. The printer is generally gonna try and do exactly what you told it to do, so it might be something that you're doing wrong. The other thing to think about is 
The build plates on those machines are more sensitive than you might think. Getting that first layer to stick down into the build plate is critical. If the first layer isn't stuck or is peeling up or is kind of half stuck or squished too far down in, you're going to have issues going forward. Oils on your fingers touching the build plate like I'm doing right now can dramatically impact how those parts are sticking, so it's something to keep in mind. The second part of the blame game is to blame the filament. It's generally going to be a problem with your filament. Is the filament too wet? If it's a PETG, a nylon, a TPU, something like that, it could have absorbed too much moisture and it might be wet and that might be causing an issue. You might once again have the wrong settings. You might be using some weird brand of filament that seemed like $5 is too good to be true off of Amazon. Maybe that's the case. So to troubleshoot this, go ahead and swap your filament to a known good. Something you were printing last week that was totally fine. Swap out the filament, see if that is the problem. The third part of the blame game is to blame the machine itself. There could be something functionally wrong with it. It could have a blocked nozzle. Um, the extruder could be you know, acting up. There could be a lot of um, shavings inside the um, nozzle, the extruder. Those are all things that you can figure out later. But first blame yourself, then blame the filament, then look at the machine. There are a lot of test prints, like the Benchy I mentioned previously, that you can download to kind of troubleshoot some of these common issues. If these things don't print right, you might have some issue with the machine. Linked down below, I have a lot of these test files that you can try printing for yourself. Lastly, most printers now have user groups online, Facebook groups, forums, uh, Reddit discussions, and other things like that they are really good for troubleshooting. Also, if you search YouTube and some other common places like that, you can find a lot of troubleshooting. I don't want to get into troubleshooting here, but there's a lot of resources available. But I think the best place to start, blame yourself, blame the filament, blame the machine, and then start doing some test prints, and then you can figure out where your problems lie. Okay, so let's show the whole process of downloading a file, slicing it, and printing it all in one go. I am in my slicer. Uh, yours might look a little bit different. This is Orca Slicer, which is based off of Bamboo Studio, which is based off of Prusa Slicer. They're all kind of similar. So here we are. Let's go over to Printables. Printables is where we're going to download our Benchy. So up here in the search, we'll just type in Benchy. And it'll give you a lot of different options. We're just going to go with most popular. And that is this one by Prusa Research. Now here we could just click download, but let's look at the different files. So here you can see that these are pre-sliced. It is already sliced for the Mark III S and S Plus. This one's already pre-sliced for the Mini Mini Plus. But then we also have the actual model down here. We're just going to download the actual model. So we're just going to click download. And if we go over on the details tab, you can see that there's a whole website for the Benchy with instructions, all that good stuff. Usually this is where the print instructions would be if the um, uploader has them. And then you can also see all the people that have made them and various comments if you want to get into all that. But we're just going to go back into the slicer. We're going to go ahead and click add. And then we're going to select the Benchy we just download, open it. And there it is. From here, we can move it around, resize it, do some other stuff. We're just going to keep it right there in the middle. We really only have a couple things to select. We've got our printer already selected up here, the K1 Max. For filament, we just need to choose which one we're going to be using. I'm going to use this high flow generic PLA, which I already have selected, but choosing a different filament would change the settings for that filament for those profiles you have set. And then lastly, we need to choose the layer height. Think of this as the resolution. If we do a bigger layer, like 0.24 draft, this is going to be a much chunkier, thicker, less fine detail. But if we do 0.16, it's going to have much more fine detail, but it's going to take longer. Let's go ahead and slice this as 0.16. Select that, hit slice, wait for it a couple seconds. and our part is sliced. If we zoom in, we can see all sorts of inf interesting information. You can see infill, overhangs, outer walls, inner walls, and if we do this little slider, you can see every single layer individually. There's how many here? 300 layers. 
and that is how our part is going to be built up. And one thing if you're new to 3D printing you might not know is that most 3D printed parts are hollow. There's no reason to print it fully solid. There is a lot of hollowness on the inside. That's called infill. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it's going to take right at one hour. And if I go ahead and click this print, it's going to send it over to the printer and print it. And that's all we need to do. So it's really just, what, like five clicks, load it in, select the filament, select the layer height, slice, print, done. Nice and easy. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. So as you can see, we're now using Prusa Slicer, and even though it looks a little bit different, all the same stuff is here. It's just kind of in slightly different spots. So let's go ahead and add a more complicated model. Click Add. And it's going to go ahead and load our model, move the wipe tower. This is a wipe tower because the Prusa XL has multiple extruders. Don't worry about that. You can also see these little lines and everything. There are some issues with the model. You can see it down here, 46 open edges. We're just gonna go ahead and ignore that. The model does end up slicing just fine, so just ignore those lines. If we were to slice it just like this, there would be a problem, however. It would try and place these layers just in midair, which is gonna be a big problem. So this part does need support, but we really don't want it oriented like this. That's gonna cause a lot of issues. This little flat part I designed on the part is what we're going to use to actually orient it. So we're just going to go ahead and click the model, click place on face, and then you can see all the different faces that exist on this. And if we click on this one, it will orient the part properly so that we can um, do the correct supports. I'm going to move it kind of here in the middle, look at it, make sure everything looks good. Now we've got a few options here. I don't want this fast detailed because that's gonna take forever. Let's just go with the biggest slice, which is 0.25 structural. And yep, we're gonna transfer those settings over. We are going to use supports on the build plate only. And we're going to be using, yeah, let's use pet G for this. So now we go over to print settings support material, and now we can generate our organic supports. So we click organic, and then if we go over back to here, we should be able to generate all of this. Just click slice now. And now it's gonna generate all of the supports needed to support this part, so we're not just printing in midair. And this will take a little bit of time for this larger part. And there you go, the slicing is finished and you can see these really cool green tree structures. These are the support structures. So if we look at the individual layers, let's zoom out. If we zoom in like right here, you can see that if these layers tried to print without these supports, it would just start printing in mid-air. And that's exactly what these supports are for, is to support the underneath side so that we can actually print this and we don't have to worry about it just spitting plastic into mid-air. And that is what the supports do. So it's pretty easy just to click a couple buttons, add these supports in, and you can see that there are no supports on the inside of this hollow, which is why we clicked on support on build plates only. So nice and simple. And over here, we can see that the part is gonna take about 13 hours. It's gonna cost about seven bucks based on the filament settings that we have. And it's gonna use a fair amount of filament. We're gonna use, um, what, 250 grams or about a quarter of a spool of filament for this part. But this is pretty big. This is the part that I showed earlier in the video. So pretty cool stuff. And to give you a good idea, if we select a smaller layer size, you can see just the difference in how long this will take. So let's do 0.10. It's going to take forever to slice. And we're going to transfer all those over and hit slice. Okay, so now we have it sliced at 0.1 millimeter layer, and there's a lot more layers. Um, 
2526 to be exact. So a lot more layers, and that means it's gonna take a lot more time. This is gonna take 21 hours. So you can see that the higher level of detail, higher level of resolution is gonna take longer because there are just that many more layers that it's having to print. So just something to keep in mind. And yeah, that's all there is to slicing parts. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more confidence using your brand new 3D printer. Please check the description down below. There's a lot of links and a lot more information that I didn't even discuss in this video. Please consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.